Right, and how does this work? Go, go in front, that's go it, front. that's it, show your name, show there you go. Yeah. Show your name and then flap it up and What, down. try and bend to it? You or can just bend, bend. You, some people look in, some people just rather do the clap of ball, it's up to you. So just bend yeah, like yeah. that? So say your name and what you do. Hi, my name, what, bend yeah. that down first? No, after. After. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tutu. I am the principal at Technics Academy and I am here on the Cherrywood podcast with Simon and Rachel. Welcome to the Cherrywood podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. Now you come back round here, and now the podcast is finished, so we've we run out of time. <laughs> now I can go home. <laughs> okay, before we start, I did mention when we found you in the car park, I mentioned the sign. <laughs> Find her in the car park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just how like she's yeah. shopping. No, I, didn't, I didn't find her as to say, hello. You look like you could do a podcast. <laughs> the podcast was And planned. then dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my way to one. She was shopping at the time. I said, can you put that do bench mind, down? Do you mind just popping in round and <laughs> doing our podcast today? Yeah. <laughs> How long do you think before that sign falls off the wall? It's got two bits of new double-sided tape on it. Oh, uh, you should be privileged. New tape. <laughs> um, I'll say 15 minutes. That's not okay, bad. That's, that's a not a bad shout. shout. 15 minutes. That's the average usually. Today's sponsors are De Giorgio Properties, your premier choice for expert building solutions. From concept to completion, trust them to turn your dreams into a reality. Visit their website today at degiorgiosproperties.com. Dimidici Associates, chartered structural and civil engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidiciassociates.com. Right at Home Medway, providers of safe and trusted quality care for adults in the comfort of their own home. Whether you need companionship, medication assistance, personal care, living care or more, we've got you covered. Visit rightathome.co.uk forward slash Medway or call them on 01634 979 0. Or are there times where it's never falling off? Some, once. Once. Or no. twice. Twice. I think once in here. And once with our And son. once at home on our, our <laughs> smoother wall. And we yeah. couldn't get it off the wall. <laughs> Took the paper off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, two, two. <laughs> yes. Tell us about yourself. Because we don't actually know much about you. No. And we sort of purposely tried to keep it like that. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not, yeah. Horrible not, way. not by looking at you going, yeah, I don't yeah. want to know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I think that's the best way. So yeah. my name's Tutu and... Um, I grew up, I was born and bred in Nigeria. I came uh, to the UK as a teenager. I uh, came and did my college here. We're talking 20 years ago. I uh, went to university, did my master's, uh, and then uh, went and qualified as a teacher. So I qualified as a teacher about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Worked in mainstream education for about over a decade. Um, then my daughter got ill and I was spending more time shuttling between hospital and just can, couldn't carry on with uh, full-time work. So. Can I ask what your daughter got ill with? Or? Uh, they had to take out our tonsils and adenoids. They didn't know exactly oh. what was wrong with her, yeah. but they were just trying a lot of different things. And it was more to do with our respirate, respiratory Res system. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so they couldn't figure it out. Um, and the surgery worked for about a year and it all came back after. Oh, dear. So I decided to leave full-time work and um and at the time just before i left full-time work i was doing tutoring on the side oh yeah so i decided you know what i'm gonna do tutoring uh full-time and just focus on it and we started technic technics academy in 2017 and it's a tutoring school okay so yeah. what was it called technis so we got thank, the... thank goodness you didn't call it <laughs> thank goodness you didn't call it and i bet you thought about it yeah two two tutoring <laughs> Well, I use that. I use that. So I go, it's two to the tutor. <laughs> so I do okay. use that, yeah. And um, I hear you've written quite a few books in your time. Are they all educational type books? So, yeah, I've written five uh, maths, because I, I, I'm, I'm a qualified maths teacher, so I've written okay. five children's maths books. Nice. And my sixth book is uh, an actual book for mums who are looking to start their own business, uh, have a little bit of financial freedom, um, be mum. Right, so I think okay. that's, that's, 
it's not a downside because obviously you love your children, but it's so hard. Mm. And I'm not saying anything about men, you know, but it's so hard to then get back into work again, isn't it? Because you have the childcare to worry about. You have your job to worry about. And yes, you have a lot of support from home. Mm. But it is really difficult to it, take that step it, from having a child and then going back into work. It's very, very hard. 100%. And I wrote it from a single mom's perspective as mm. well, because I felt like for single moms, um, having uh, um, been financially buoyant is a common fact, is a common problem single moms have. Mm. They're always short of money. Mm. And so I wanted to write something on how uh, moms can look out of whatever it is they're doing for full time or part time and see how they can raise some income for themselves and make life a lot more comfortable for mm. them and their children. So where do you get the inspiration from for that book then or for something like that? Um, so it's because I struggled and I went through that myself. So I struggled financially as a mom. Um, I, there was at one point I remember vividly where my daughter said, can I have a uh, McDonald's? Mm -hmm. And at the time, um, Happy Meal McDonald's was one pound ninety nine. Yes, yeah. And I was looking everywhere. I couldn't make it up to one ninety nine. Oh. I think we got about to one pound sixty. And I, I, I couldn't afford to buy my own child mm. a Happy Meal. Mm. So the struggles were really, really there initially at the start. And I just wanted to um, let other parents know who were going through the same, especially moms, especially single moms, that there is light at the end of the tunnel mm. and you can get yourself out of whatever situation you're in. You can get some build up some more skills on the side. You can get more education. You mm. could have a side hustle. That will bring something in for you. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really good. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, sorry about that. I was about to say something, but it can't turn into a cough. So are the are the audio books as well that they've got? Or are these just physical? So these books? are physical hard books. I'm yeah. um, looking to make the most recent one, which is for mums, into perhaps an audio book or put it on Kindle. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what I worried about. What, was my head? It, it did that, and it's never done. It's never done that before. And I'm like, I've got to protect this lady. Oh, oh there's that a was, claim there. Yeah, yeah. How many minutes was that then? Oh, that, that was, was under 10.15, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. never mind. <laughs> the closest is about three seconds. So. Oh, you tell her that now. <laughs> she Unfortunately, five minutes. you've still got to buy your own happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've still got. It's got to be an adult one now. <laughs> she, she doesn't have happy meals anymore. <laughs> oh, so let's, let's, let's go back, if you don't mind. Let's go back to Nigeria. Do you yes. remember much about Nigeria? I do. Uh, do you travel there still? Or? I went back there last year. Oh yeah. right, okay. So you got yeah. a lot of family out there. I've got yeah, I've got lots of family out there. I've got my uh, siblings here, so but I still visit. Well, when I say I still visit. I visited last year since I left home. So, yeah, it was, it was oh. really nice going back home. Right, okay. Yeah. And would you, did you know much about why you were going to England at the time? or I did. I knew that I was coming to England for my education. I was coming for okay, education. my, yeah, I was coming for my higher education. At the time. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So did you like school then when you actually got here? Was it a bit nerd? Would, were you a bit scared to sort of come all the way over here and be the new girl in the class? Um, and... Were languages a problem or had you already started? No, English because right English then? is the main language oh, in Nigeria. Is, right? There's is so it? many languages yeah, in that's Nigeria. What I think there are loads. So you might not be able to speak to your next door neighbour because they're speaking a different language. Really? But English oh. is what we're all taught in schools. And um, yeah, we all speak English. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> so I have you... to make sure on YouTube that I am... Um... <laughs> that I aim for those when I'm doing promotions as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> all the different languages. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've got an audience out there oh, that yeah. you should tap into. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So you came over here and obviously you specialised in maths. You liked maths. Mm -hmm. You were drawn to I maths. I enjoyed it. So what did you then do in your degree and your masters? What What did you go into? So I did uh, software engineering for my first degree. No. Um, did IT for a couple of years. Um, I, I did. My master's was engineering management. So, because right. the thing what they say about engineers, I don't know, because you're an engineer, is that, you know, they just focused on all the technical stuff. They don't have any um, clue when it comes to management, when it comes to leadership and stuff like that. So, there's this um, master's called engineering management mm -hmm. and it's like equivalent to MBA. Right. Okay. Um, and that's um, what so, I did. So, it's not really delving into the actual 
in depth of it it's more that how to manage it how to manage such, it yeah, yeah. so okay. if you do go into it and then you have to go into management or mm. leadership the things to look out for so i did it for a bit but it really wasn't for me and um i went back to university and did a postgraduate degree in education okay and then um started teaching so did you have a role did you have a job in um it um, I worked for a small firm where they were modifying uh, CRMs at the time. And I went to India to do some they were, mod- so they were modifying what? CRMs, so customer relationship management, right, okay. things like uh, software, like applications. Right, okay. Do a bit of coding on the back. Not my forte, didn't enjoy it. Mm. Didn't like just sitting in front of a computer for hours and hours mm. and trying to figure out what's the best way to uh, modify an app. Um, so it came out of that and just went straight into teaching. Right. So that is literally one job and then teaching straight after. Nothing else before? Anything? No. Well, um, whilst at uni, you know, you do lots of different jobs. Yep. <laughs> worked in a factory, worked in McDonald's, yeah. worked in Morrison's, yep. did some couple of night shifts. Mm. Um, so picked up different skills along the line whilst in college and mm. university. Oh, okay. Brilliant. So let's take some snippets out of your book then. Yeah, <laughs> safe people buying it. <laughs> I love. I, there's nothing better than a hard copy of a book. I know mm. all these audio books, and yes, you can listen to them in the car. But I love having a book and being and, able and to hold it. Yeah. it. I yeah, know yeah, it sounds yeah. really weird, but you do this with the pages, and you smell it. I yeah. love a good hard. But copy. it's the same yeah. with vinyl, isn't it? Which that's in my day it. was called records, but now they decided <laughs> to call it vinyl. But yeah, there's something about vinyl. But that's all come back into fashion again. Mm. Now, isn't it's it? art. It's artwork, mm. isn't it? Mm. A lot of people just put it on their walls because mm. it's be- beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so okay, so let's talk about one of your books. So mm. uh, um advising um single mums into becoming business owners. Mm-hmm. Business. So what sort of advice would you give someone? Are they they're like they're they're um couple of kids mm-hmm. by themselves mm-hmm. don't know where to turn how would they start the first steps of changing their life so i like the bit where you said a uh, couple of kids nowhere to turn yeah um sometimes we we think you know we're all by ourselves and we've got to take it all on by ourselves but there is help out there and you can build your own community um so speaking as an immigrant myself where you know you necessarily don't have everyone around you, you can actually look to build that yourself where you can have a support system where and you can give and take, not just take and take all the time, mm. but give. So where you might have to step out of your comfort zone to go to certain places where you can make friends, you can get to meet people, either it being going to church, going to a gym, mm-hmm. um, going for, I don't know, whatever activities are around. And so... Ex- so you might be on your own, but you don't have to be on your own. Mm. You don't have to be on your own. And getting that community, that small circle built mm. around you to help support you. And then looking for someone that is in the field of what you want to do, who's already done that before, yeah, who's yeah. already taken that step and seeing how Almost they can like, guide you. Like a mentor. Mm. Like yeah. a mentor. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. what was your first form of communication to build that community? Church? Um, Church was, mm, church was there, but then I also stepped out of my comfort zone, like, you know, going out to exercise um, and actually just talking to people at the Mm. school gate Mm -hmm. and just um, going out to places that I wouldn't normally go to and seeing whatever activities they've got going on Mm. and just making little friends, making an effort, Effort, you know, and that's how that all started. and. And then being there for other people mm. so that when you need, because um, again, I'm speaking from a single mom's perspective, because then childcare is a problem and everything. Oh, absolutely. And having someone who can help you when you really need it, not taking advantage, mm. though, and you being there for them when they need that mm. help. I think mm. it's also ex- accepting it because sometimes you feel so proud of yourself that you don't accept the help, isn't it? it it's more of a, I can't accept this because I feel ashamed to ask for help. Yeah. And just, just sort of get over that, mm-hmm. get rid of all that negativity and just say, if I need help, I'm going to accept yeah. help. When it comes to me, if someone says, yeah, I'll pick your child up, don't say, oh, are you sure? You know, are you yeah. sure? I'll do it. Just say, thank you so much. That's amazing. That sort of thing. So it's little bits about accepting the help that is actually offered to 100%, you as well. 100%. Mm. 
think the most successful people admit that they can't do everything. No, yeah. You know what I mean? I, They're I not think, experts at everything, but I they get the right people in. Too much. Mm. They get the you right people to in. Do yeah. Yeah. everything on your own. Yeah. It would just be too much, I mm. think. Yeah. That's why people hire employees in businesses, well, you'd only, right? You'd only grow so far, wouldn't mm. you? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All by yourself. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, that some people are just stuck with four walls. Mm. You just got to get out, haven't you? You have to get out, and you, that's you what you do. did. You got out. You went to these um, fitness um, places and yeah. communities, and yeah, that's the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, and that first step is massively scary. It is. It you is. just have to. It's almost like you have to be pushed to do it. it sometimes is, <laughs> it is. It's, it's like you and know, like it's a new country for you as well, wasn't it? it? So, how long were you in the country before you were in that sort of situation? Oh no, I've been. I I, I didn't have my daughter until. Um, 2013. Oh right, okay. I've been I've been around for a while, but it's not. I wasn't necessarily leaving where I knew everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's a new community for Mm. me. Mm. Stepping out of your comfort zone and actually talking to people and people getting to know you. Mm. Even going to the nail shop, for instance, and meeting other ladies and talking and just having a conversation with them. Whereas Mm. I'll just stay indoors by myself Mm. in one place. Mm. Which is where Rachel's doing. off to after this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no way off to get your nails done. It's nice therapy, isn't it? I love getting my nails done. And but I hate it because I was really She always wants hospital. to know what they're saying about her yes, while she's in there. I would there. love to know. You know, yeah. like some of the... Yeah, 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 the conversations yeah. that they have. And I'm sort of sitting there going, wow, I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so annoying because I've been in hospital recently for an operation and you have to take all your nails off, oh, don't you? And so I'm sort of like in and out, in and out. So I'm getting my nails done. And then they phone up and go, oh, you, we need you in for another operation. I'm like, I've just oh, got my nails done. Are you okay, though? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm absolutely okay. fine. So, yeah, it's just Mentally, sort of like, she's not, but... <laughs> that's for living with you, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, so you're, you live in the sitting ball area, don't you? Yes, we won't we give do. everyone your whole address. <laughs> so please don't. <laughs> well, if there's any men out there. <laughs> but um, is that where you went to when you came came to the country, or do you go to London first? No, or? so I've always lived in Kent. I, oh, right, I lived okay. in Dartford when I came in. I um, stayed with my aunt, my yep. aunt, my uncle, and their family, their kids. So I stayed with them for five years. So mm. they're literally my UK mum and dad. <laughs> oh, right. So your mum and dad are still in the. Um, they're Niger- back home, but oh, they they, right, okay. they do come here very frequently to visit. Um, it's now. amazing commitment for a parent to send their daughter to another country to, just for their education. Yeah, education mm. amazing. Well, yeah. heart wrenching, really. Well, I think at the time I was I was mature. I was ready to go. I've you know it's more or less like you've you, you've. You're done at home. Mm. What's the next step? So what yes, was your you age again? Me. Sorry. I was 19. Oh, nine, oh yeah. when you left? Yes. Oh, 19. right. Okay. Yeah, so I wasn't yeah. completely young. No, no, no. Yeah. No. So, um, so come out here. Yes, you do miss your family from time to time, but there's phones, there's emails, there's video calls. Mm. And, yeah. Of course. I'm thinking when I was a kid when there was just carrier pigeon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've got into your sort of tutoring and everything yes. like that. So what made you go into tutoring then? Obviously, I know your daughter was sick, but mm-hmm. you enjoy it now? You you sort of thrive off it a little bit? 100%. Um, so it was, I, there was, there was this lady that I knew and she had, uh, she had a 16 year old who was in year 11 and she was about to write GCSEs and the child was predicted E for her maths, mm. and the mom reached out to me to say, "Would you be able to teach her?" It was about three months the exam, and um, so the child was basically predicted to fail, mm-hmm. and we went over it, and she got a B. Wow! And that got me asking two questions: What if her mom hadn't reached out? She mm-hmm. would have got an E, thinking she was dumb, she wasn't yeah. able. Or if her mom had reached out earlier, this child has got potential to get an A grade. Yeah, so, absolutely. So then I've been working in school by that time with kids who um, s- sometimes they'll give me a bottom set mm-hmm. where they'll just go, just keep them in class because of their behavior. Mm. You know, yeah. If you can just keep them in <laughs> class, you've yeah. done a good job. And yeah, yeah. majority of them are predicted to fail. Yeah. Um, so when they come to my class, I, I'm, I'm telling them that the lowest grade you get out of this is a C grade. Mm. But the kids have been in education for the last five years, been told they're going to fail. They believe that. That's it. That's the thing. That's, that's what I was going to say. If they're told thing. that, yeah. then they just act that. Yeah, yeah they, they do. They act that. They mm. do. So we change all their target grades. So for my class, I change all their target grades to a C. Um, there's, there was always resistance. They're like, miss, I'm predicted a G. Why are you? There's no way I can get a C. Mm. There's no way I can do this. 
And I've had colleagues come to me before and say, why are you showing them that? Those kind of questions, they're way too difficult for them. There's no way they're going to handle it. I'm like, you'd never know until you expose them to it. Mm. How do you know they can't do it if Mm. you don't show them? And so 78% of these kids actually got their C grade. That's amazing. And so that just got me thinking that there's no child. So I wrote an ebook on no child's dumb, no child's incapable of doing well. Mm. It's just that they need the right support. They need the right environment. And I realized that I stumbled a get across a, a woman's book, um, Carol Dweck, on growth mindset. Mm. And our book showed me that all I'd been doing along was just changing their mindset, mindset. completely. Absolutely. I didn't realize that was a thing. I was just doing it off the back mm. of my hand. So I tapped more into that mm. and realized if you can work on kids' um, mindset, they can achieve anything. And what you did straight away was set a goal. Mm. You set a C for them. Mm. And, and if they've got no goal to, to aim for and yeah. they're just told, oh, you're not going to be anywhere near mm. them, then they've got nothing to aim for. No, it? no. I mean, that, mm. nowadays, as well, you should try and encourage kids as much as possible and say, mm. go for it. If you yeah. want to try and go for your A, you go yeah. for it. So what's yeah. the ebook called? Um, plug, plug in, plug in. It just says no child is dumb. No yeah. child is done. No child is done. And you can get it on Amazon or something like that? It's not. I just put it on. We have a Facebook group where I put my free okay. books in there. You can, you can advertise yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what is the That's Facebook great. group called? It's called uh, Technis Super Learners. So it's, we're Technis Academy. And so there's a Facebook group dedicated for moms. So the other thing I was also doing was educating moms, especially immigrant moms mm-hmm. who came into the country but didn't have a clue what the educational system was and didn't understand how to navigate it so i'm educating them telling them what opportunities are available what the next level is for their children and as well as working with those children themselves just turning things around and what the work we do with them yes we go in and say we're teaching maths but it's way beyond just maths Mm. because it it just um has a massive impact on all the other subjects and even on the way they see life and they see things and they turn around and say oh, I didn't know I can do this. I feel like I can do this Mm. now. You can see their confidence. So I'm really, I have a really big thing with working with young people, young children on their confidence, you know, little things like a child might be talking to me and like, I need eye contact. I want your head raised mm. up. I want you looking at me. Yeah. You've just and sat there and gone, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally watched your body language. You were sitting so, there like that and went, ooh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so like, and, so, and then they've got, yes, miss. And like, so it's just building that confidence in them. I don't feel like I do much when it comes to the actual maths. But by the time I finish the work on them, they really want to do it. But they're mm. life lessons, aren't they? For the interviews, you've got to look, oh, look at your interviewer straight in the eye and, and talk to them, you know? Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. And then you'd be surprised. Some kids don't have that. Mm. And I, I just feel like where, where, wherever I am, and I have contact with children, contact with young people, I want them to know that they, they do count, they're unique and they're special. And I just want to drop that bit of positivity with them um, wh- when I leave them. Because because with maths, with English, mm-hmm. it, you do have to be a little bit creative, mm-hmm. right? So especially with the creative writing, you have to have that little bit of flair yeah. to say, oh, I'm, actually, I'm going to take this this angle. Yeah, yeah. But with maths, it's logical. Yes. There is a yes or no answer for maths. So you can mm-hmm. teach that, right? You can say to them, this is the process. This yes. is how we get here. This yes. is how, And you can actually teach them that and yes. say, if you learn that, you'll be, you'll be set, basically. Totally. Mm. But maths these days, especially with the new curriculums change, um, it's not always yes or no answer anymore. Yes. It, they they have to work through it, like mm-hmm. you said. Um, and then they might try one method. It doesn't work. Does that mean you give up? And mm-hmm. you might not even be able to arrive at the final answer. But as long as you're able to show your steps and working out, the mm-hmm. worded the, the questions now in the exams are worded question. Mm-hmm. So your English has got to be top notch. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to comprehend what you've read mm-hmm. to be able to answer math question. That's yeah, where yeah. a lot of mm-hmm. our kids then struggle. Yes. And they can't access it. So what I do is beyond just academics. It's just literally working with children and making them know they count and they can achieve anything Mm. they put their mind to. And I'll just start with math Mm. and then they can build on it from there. Mm. Because I know our son, he he is he is he likes English, but he's he's rather up here and he can't transfer it to the page. He's sort of. Oh, I don't want to write it, but I've got it all yeah. up here. So he has that sort of problem. But maths, oh my God, he gets, he gets it. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Maths, he's spot on. Yeah. And I always say to him, 
because he was a bit worried when his school report came home and he went, oh, my, my English isn't going to be very good, Mum. I went, don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. I said, I know the struggles that yeah. you face. Yeah. We've dealt with this. We do this. We do this. Yeah. We do this. And yeah. like, Oh, okay, then you can literally uh, see what gets how... st- us stressed is joined up writing. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. No, <laughs> it doesn't matter if they can join their writing up. I or can not. tell you now, once they get to secondary school, no one cares. No about one cares. Yeah, <laughs> we don't check. Just, <laughs> Let's be honest, they're gonna be typing more than anything, <laughs> aren't yeah. they? Because yeah. you teach these kids in year one reception to yeah. do A is like this, you give them all the dotted lines, yeah, yeah. and then the next stage is. Oh, but now you've got to join it up. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. completely different to the yeah, base. They should be marked yeah. on how, how understandable it is. Yeah, correct. Not yeah, um, joined up writing. Correct. Yeah. And how neat and tidy it yeah, is. Yeah. So if it's readable and legible. As long as it's exactly. readable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As long as it's readable, you know. Curs- cursive is a little bit ha- outdated. Mm. When it comes yeah, back. definitely. We've had the conversation about bringing typing lessons back, haven't we? All right, so yes. I've just got to have a go at you. <laughs> I need to moan at you. God. You plonk everything down on the table. So I've removed... Your mic off the table, and now you plonk it down <laughs> on the mic table. <laughs> you use the table, the other, the other table, the mic. We've got a teacher in the oh, room. You're being told off. It dri- drives me spare. I can't believe that. You put it on the same table that I've attached the mic to. Oh. <laughs> Stress me That's out. What you get working with you. Stresses <laughs> me out. Oh, totally. so, Can I come so and work far, with you? Totally? So, so far, you're both doing well. Oh, I can tell you I that. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> I, in I'm my ears, sorry. I just got a bang. bang. Sorry. I was going to say, man. That's not my. That's it. That's a you. What did you say? Ali? That's a, a you problem. problem. <laughs> well, I hope it, it rained earlier and the ceiling uh, started leaking right above Rachel. It, I, I, nothing's yeah. leaked again. Nothing's leaked. It's not that I'm aware of. Or the rain stopped. It could have been that. But I hope it starts leaking on her again. Yeah. Oh, that's really? it. <laughs> Tap the mic. That's it. I'm going to put just everything on the oh floor God. now. Oh, God, and she's sorry. never looked. She's always off the edge of the screen. Come closer. She's not going to bite. <laughs> it's, there we go. It's telling off Rachel, Dean. Yeah, it? <laughs> Episode 66. <laughs> Episode 66. You thought she would have got the hang of it by now. Look, I'm having a chat. I can't help it if I'm... Being interactive, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. I'm sorry. Uh, be patient. Two against one. Be, be patient, okay? 66 episodes. I've been patient. <laughs> I've finally exploded. <laughs> okay. So right. Time okay, is sorry. <laughs> You've got it out now. <laughs> so when, when I found you in the car park, mm-hmm. you've got this lovely uh, mini bus. Mm-hmm. So you pick students up as well. So yeah. let's talk about your your um, business. Yeah. Your, so uh, our business is split into different dimensions. One of it is the online tutoring that we do. We provide online tutoring for several kids online. Uh, we've gone back to face-to-face uh, re- just recently. So we do do the face-to-face classes as well in mm-hmm. our Chatham and sitting box. Can I ask, when you say we, have you got an, a few people have in you your team? team? Yes, we've got, I've got a team. So okay. I've got a team of uh, teachers and admin we all work together to make this happen. Yeah. How, how many yeah. people in your team? Um, we're just over 70 people. Wow. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say yeah. like five. <laughs> That's yeah. brilliant. 70, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, we, so we do online, we do face-to-face. Mm. Um, we also do the childcare part of things because um, I'm a registered childminder. So I, and that's more like a passion project. Mm-hmm. So, I really struggled when I was in full-time work with childcare. So I wanted to help parents, especially before and after school care. Um, so we are able to take them to school in the mornings for parents who can't, and we're able to bring them back home. But once again, childcare chisels away at what you, you, if you get out to work as yeah. a single parent, yeah. you've then got to put it all to childcare. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Crazy. it's crazy. And even for people working from home, mm. it can be a bit of a hassle um, dipping in to pick the kids and coming Absolutely. back to yeah, work. Yeah. So mm. we'll just deliver your child to you at your door. Perfect. What time can you start? <laughs> <laughs> we have two, two different directions. So, so yeah. with 70 people, do you cover more than Kent or are you just the Kent area for now? Or um, So what you mean, the people that we work with or yeah. the students? The, the students. The yeah. students. Yeah. So we, majority of our students are based in the UK, but we have students from 17 other countries. Really? Yeah, so... Uh, but with UK, US and Canada being the top three, we are students. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, so, so you don't have to, well, I suppose you have to be bilingual in that sense, but if they're coming from US and Canada, you mm. know, obviously. They, so the, all the classes are taught English mm. and we only 
uh, cover the UK and the US curriculum. So irrespective of what country you're coming from, they so should. you need to decide which curriculum you'd like to follow. Is the Canadian one any different? The curriculum is slightly yeah. different from the US, but most of the programs that we do, like um, so, you mentioned your son with his writing, mm. with his English. So we do like creative writing programs, mm. which you know the curriculum for actually writing creatively is very very similar. Mm. So either you're coming, from, you just want to be, your child to be able to write mm. and to read properly, mm. and we do have reading programs as well. Where mm. people can join from any country. Do you have people like teachers, tutors that specialise in certain countries? You okay. Um, sorry, I thought that was my phone. <laughs> I didn't hear I a thing. Okay. Didn't hear a thing. <laughs> He's on silent. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't have a go at you like I did her. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get. <laughs> I was starting to Nervous. get scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be told off. You won't be told off. <laughs> it's Friday. On your 66th appearance, you're, you can get told off. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. There she goes. On the floor now with that. That's it. Yeah. I thought and there's I'd no sound. <laughs> yes. Mm, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were we saying? Uh, yeah. No, we were talking about um, Canada and America. Mm, and and uh, yeah, what I asked was... Yeah. Um, do you have certain tutors that specialize in those countries? Yes. Yeah, so we've only just started because all these other countries, we weren't like advertising to them. They just, we just had people coming from mm. them. And so we are, we decided to look into the US market and do more. So we're looking to recruit people out there in the US who can then just teach the US students. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, right. So yes. currently, is are all your tutors in England currently? Our tutors are all over, to be honest. Oh, right. In the UK, we have tutors in Dubai. We have tutors Amazing. in um, Nigeria. We have tutors in, where else? We have tutors in Romania. So our tutors Brilliant. are really mixed. Mm. Yeah, But yeah, majority of our tutors are in the UK. Amazing. Nice. So... Going back to your books and everything like that, mm -hmm. uh, would you class yourself as almost a motivational speaker in some sense? If you or a motivational that's a, writer, that's what Hayden said you were to <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I love Hayden, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I try and be positive. Not doesn't always. There are days where you just don't want to be positive and just. But majority <laughs> of the time, I try and be an, as optimistic. But by the way, that's what I preach to my students. Mm. Um, so I try and be optimistic as much. And sometimes that could come across as motivational. Um, sometimes on my Facebook post, what I post, people find it motivational. But it's not me trying to motivate people. So sometimes mm. me trying to motivate myself, yeah, and I'm putting my thoughts out mm. there. It's whether it then your is character, useful. Mm. yeah. Whether it, somebody else then finds it useful or not, mm. good for them. Mm. But yeah, you could you could say I could be. Well, listening to you speak and listening to your books and your ideas, you know some of those. It's Hayden esque. <laughs> That's what <Isn't> it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and I think it is just all about the right mindset. If you've got the right mindset to do something and have the positivity, because Hayden's spoken to both of us before and mm. he's said, you know, just just take that negativity out. Take that away and then just focus on the positives because all you're doing is bringing the negativity in and it's then shadowing what you actually yeah. want. So he said, just get rid of it and then just focus on that. And uh, since doing that, I've done it a few times, but since doing <laughs> She had one that, session with Hayden. Oh, God. Yeah. It was straight after the podcast, yeah. she was crying within five minutes. Aww, and then he said... He made you cry. Yeah, and then he said, oh, let's have a photo. I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> So the photo for his uh, podcast is me, like streaming. Yeah. Okay, you're not the only one who's cried with a session <laughs> with Hayden, by the way, so don't worry. <laughs> so how long has your company been going for then? So uh, uh, the reason I'm asking is only mm. because COVID must have really disrupted you. Oh, yeah. Or was it around that it started? Oh, yeah. was it we before? started in 2017. Oh, right. right. So a couple and of years. And we were doing purely just face-to-face, -face, and we had four centres across Kent. Wow. And I was... Moving across those four centres, I had a very small team and we had about 120 students and it was going OK until COVID hit and I had to send them all home. And I, I remember sending the kids home before the government actually announced closing the schools because I just didn't feel comfortable mm. there off being in the same place and kids. I didn't want those kids to get ill, mm. but I'd just left my full time work. Oh, mm. no. um, I've just um, divorced and I 
and my business just went from 120 students to zero overnight yeah so I remember just um being there and just I spent like a whole month just trying to figure out what the next step is going Mm. to be um I found a program online there's this guy called Elliot Phillips he was um a a coach who was working with tutors who are looking to build their business and he's running this program is um a case study he hasn't even done it yet but he wants to trial it out with Mm. people and um i just said i, I want to go for this i want to know how to leverage myself and put myself in front of my audience and he said well he's going to ch- he charges a thousand five hundred at the time and i couldn't afford it mm. i said i'm i'm sorry I can't you couldn't afford. even afford a happy meal so, oh, no. <laughs> so where's the one thousand five but by that this time remember i'd already I know, started I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just trying to add a bit of stupid comedy <laughs> into it. no it's fine <laughs> so i said can, can i pay in installments and they said yeah you can pay in uh, three installments and so I still can't afford that I said can you please 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 make into six installments mm. uh he wasn't happy he reluctantly took me on and I was one of his first clients um and I remember one of my direct debit failing as well um mm-hmm. but I went on to that program studied really hard I remember wake, waking up 3 30 in the morning before my daughter wakes up and just getting to really studying and finding out what I need to do um and then we started I emailed all the 120 parents to say, um, I'm going online uh, if your kids want to come back. Because mm, Zoom saved the world, didn't it, really? But two of them came back. Really? Oh, my God. Two, two. Of them, two of them came back online because people weren't familiar with the Zoom, online Zoom, tutoring yeah, at yeah. the time. Mm. And then they were using the experience that the kids had with the school Zoom. Because the school Zoom was, the teachers didn't have an idea what they were doing. No, no, everyone time. was learning straight away. No, yeah. so, yeah. Um, but we managed to build those two students to 2,000 students online um, um, during the COVID period. Mm. So, so it amazing. Was, we started, went zero, and then went wow. back up. up again. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's brilliant. So how did, you, how did you motivate yourself to do, to get these you know, have two students, and you thought, well, I've still got to do my job, yeah, yeah. to then go from 2,000. What what did you do? How did you get mm. that, that progression? I don't know, but once I'm in front of kids, I'm okay. Mm. Like, mm. I just love teaching kids. I love working with children. Mm. And I remember um, when I was in mainstream education, I went through a period of, because I really struggled at the time. I, I would say I wasn't... T- um, diagnosed with anything but i would looking back now i think i went through a period of great depression right um but i think what got me out of it was the work that i was doing with children because mm. once i get in front of children i forget what i'm doing mm. i try and teach it's like a musician and music it's mm. just yeah. amazing and i try and because I, I look at the kids as well they're in school from morning till night i feel sorry for them not till night till they're there for most part of their day, mm. right? Mm. So I try and bring humor into my classes, mm. dry jokes. I'll do any dry jokes and the kids will <laughs> laugh. And I'm thinking, it's not funny. <laughs> and they will laugh and laugh and they'll you've, go, oh. You've got the right crowd. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and, and, and the, the, the bell would go and they'll go, is that the end of the lesson? Oh, no, miss, we don't want it to end. You oh, know? So I amazing. try and make those classes fun mm. for them. Um so yeah, once I'm in front of those kids, I don't care if it's one or mm. two. We're just building our face to face back now. Mm. We got under ten students, mm. but I I enjoy that. Yeah. You know, mm. I love the early beginnings mm. of working. I know it's going to be huge again, but let me enjoy this period mm. right mm. now. So, I did think... the advice from Elliot help you get from two to two thousand? Oh, 100 percent. Right. Okay. Hundred so percent. His coaching. His you wouldn't get his coaching for a thousand five hundred anymore. No. Right. <laughs> you probably get it for like fourteen grand because yeah. it worked. Because he, yeah. he used me and some other people's case study. Yeah. And it worked. So. Brilliant. You know, um, because I think you always will have that one teacher from school throughout whoever it is, even if it's from you know nursery school all the way up to secondary school, will have that one teacher that you will always remember. I know that I've got that. And it sounds like you are that teacher. You are that teacher to the kids. Yeah. I love, I do love my students. They did a thread on Facebook where they said, who was your favourite teacher when you were back in school? And all my adult students, they're all now adults. I got several tags from, oh, from wow. saying, so saying, and I still see them around or oh, they're all doing well. Mm. Some of them have got their own kids. You, know, you see them thriving. That's just my joy. That's mm. my reward for what mm. I do. 
definitely passionate about working with people mm-hmm. and doing the job that I do. I love it. Would you progress into adults or are you just... Are you she already is an adult. <laughs> <laughs> So what we do, we've got sensible and then stupid. Tag team. Oh my God. This is so good. I love it. She doesn't look it though. So I ask questions. So um, we, our work mainly is with children between the ages of three all the way to 18. So Technics Academy is your one stop when it comes to your child's learning journey. Yeah. So um but every now and then I have adults who would reach out to me and say, I didn't get my GCSEs in school. Is this new promotion going? But I need my C. Mm. We can work with them. Brilliant. So, but our focus really is the children, get, getting them through. We've had some students who have been with us since that 2017 that mm-hmm. we started. But there's progression. They're wow. able to move. So we prepare them for all the major exams, 11 plus, yep. GCSEs, A-level, CAT test, SAT exam, what have you. I think there's so Excellent. much pressure on kids nowadays because I mm. remember when our daughter went to um, do her 11 plus, we had to be in, because we're in a different, we were in a different catchment area to where she actually went to school. Mm. So she had to do that test. She yeah. had to then do our, where we lived catchment test. Yes. And then she had to do another test for yeah. the school that she wanted to mm. potentially go to. Yeah. And I think over, uh, I think she was only 10 at the time. She had three tests to do over the space of about a week. And by the end of it, she was... She had a cold. She was just exhausted. I just mm. said, "There's so much pressure on." But she destroyed them all. She but passed, yeah, she well she done. did. So she yeah, she was pleased, and that was a good thing. Yeah. But I just yeah. wanted to wrap her up in cotton. Oh, more yeah, there's so much pressure with the kids. But what I try and preach to parents is start early, mm. right? There's if you know your child's going to go through the eleven plus route and go into grammar school and everything. Start early, but you don't have to say to them, we're going to prepare for 11 plus. Mm, mm. Make sure they're good with their time stable. Make sure they're yeah. ahead well, with that's it. it. Make right. sure their reading is where it should be. Yeah. Make sure they're working on average or slightly above average mm. so that they can be able to access. So just start early. Just yeah. it's, make sure they get... It's the it. fault of them having to do an 11 yeah. plus that, that is, is effective. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I say don't mention 11 plus, <clears throat> but just that to build yeah. it up and start yeah, so early. They, for them. Do you have to sometimes teach the parents? Because I know from when I was at school, and probably yeah. from when you were at school, yeah. everything, like even maths as well, the, the processes and the, the way you teach it is yeah. completely different. So yeah, yeah. I know that I'm teaching my son yeah. how I was taught maths. And yeah. then sometimes he comes in and I'm saying, what? I don't yeah, understand, I don't understand what you're that. Doing. No, I don't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so, and I turn know? up with stones. <laughs> yeah. Chalk for stones. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, yeah. Dad, I haven't got a clue what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. I said, yeah. don't need revised son, so don't yeah. worry. And obviously the... I do a lot of work with parents. Mm, yeah. um, it, it, I mean, you talked about exams, your child doing three exams. I'll say to parents, your child should never be doing a ma- any exams more than three. Mm, mm. It's exhausting. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. do your research. And I show parents how to choose schools, how to look for what to look for, what kind of exams they should be looking to doing. Or if a child's not going to do an exam, what path they can take mm. and stuff like that. So with parents as well, sometimes the the kids just want you to be their parent, not their teacher. Yes, yeah. 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 Right? So and how often do kids listen to their parents? <laughs> it doesn't work. They no. need a stranger sometimes. No. Like kids can be little sods at home. Yeah. Our kids go to school and they're yeah, yeah. so well behaved. Yeah. Completely different. You yeah. know? And Ted was like that, wasn't he? Yeah. You know. Yeah, so and you have those two extremes where some <clears> parents will go, doesn't need help in terms of external help. I'll try and help him myself, but then that's not going anywhere. Mm. Or some parents will try and overwork the child and say, yes, yeah, sign him up for all the subjects for tutoring. Mm. I'm going, hang on, hang on. Yes, I'd like to have your money, but I don't <laughs> want that kind of money. Mm. I'm not going to sign your child off for every single one of those mm. subjects. No, that's right. What is the subject they're struggling most with? Is it their reading that really needs support now? We will help them with their reading, mm. right? Or is it just the maths? Don't worry. we can. And I, your child doesn't have to be in tutoring all the time if you know it's just that period mm. that they need it. Mm. So it's just seeking that external help when mm. they do need it and not trying to... Sometimes you just need to be there next to them as a mum, encouraging, not trying to show mm-hmm. them how to do it because the way we find creative ways of teaching them in school, mm. so it's totally different from the mm. ways you were taught. Mm. We'll sing, we'll dance, we'll do mm. several crazy mm. things to teach those children yeah, no, but you're absolutely. using stones and oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stone 
being thrown everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Brilliant. So are you looking for tutors as well still? Do you still look um, you got what you need at the moment? We're always taking tutors as the mm. need um, increases. So yeah. we're always looking for tutors, especially mm. right now we're looking for English tutors. So do you know any English tutors? We do. Uh, primary or secondary, send them our way. Um we yeah, do, actually. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good then. Yeah, brilliant. Not you, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking, no, please. Don't yeah, please don't let it be you. Yeah. No, no I'm, still, I'm still at school. <laughs> so how, would, how are people going to find you? How are parents going to find you if their children need some help? So we are on all the social medias, but we're very active on Instagram. It's technis underscore academy underscore tutoring. What's the name again? Technic. Technic. So we got the word from tech, spell it out. Technic. T E C H. No, there's no H. Right, that's where I'm seeing. Well done. <laughs> it's T E C N I S. T E C N I S. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Technic Academy, where we've got a website. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, if you want to see me do some little dance, you can go on Instagram and TikTok. Okay, I'm going to go to that. <laughs> we get you to do one on here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's, Rachel's going to do a video of me on doing a little dance. <laughs> yeah. and you, you'd see on the reel. <laughs> it's been lovely having you on, Thank too. You. Thank you so, so much for coming. And I wish you all, really all the best in the future. Thank but you. it sounds like you don't need any uh, wishes because you're doing very well. So Thank you so much. I was going to say very proud of you, but it's as if I... <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Simon. I feel like I've known you for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. That's snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road Strood. Try the Viking Challenge.